If you ever wanted to be an airline helicopter pilot, then this video is made just for you. This Skorsky S76 runs airline travels between Vancouver and Victoria, and today we're getting a tour from one of the pilots that flies it. Everybody, I'm here with Phil, and Phil, you're the operations manager, is that right? Yeah, manager of flight operations and standards for okay. Helijet International. Okay, and uh, so what is this helicopter that we that we have here? So we're looking at an S76 uh, C double plus. We've got a fleet of about 10 Sikorskis and a mix of A model, a B, an A double plus, and some C double pluses and two C pluses as well. Okay, <laughs> quite a few in the fleet yeah, then. Yeah, we've got them all. Yeah, and what is it that uh, you primarily do with with these uh, Sikorskis? So the C double pluses and the A models primarily are used to service our passenger uh, airline service from Vancouver between Nanaimo and Victoria. Yeah. And in the summer, four or five of these machines will go up to Haida Gwaii to uh, take customers out to the fishing lodges. Oh, okay. And so in the winter on our scheduled service, they're an IFR two crew platform, and in the summer, it's all single pilot VFR. So basically, today, Welcome we're to full Vancouver. IFR. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So on this machine, what, uh, what engines do you have in this? So the C double plus is an Ariel 2S2 engine, uh, producing a max continuous horsepower of somewhere around 900 uh, horsepower each. Yeah. Uh, twin engine helicopter. And this this one can fly single engine, no problem maintaining. Yeah, really maintain good single action. engine performance. Uh, we're not quite into the full Cat A world. Um, we have a little bit of exposure coming off the helipads here, so we do have floats on board, mm -hmm. but uh, very good single engine performance. So oh, okay. So when, um, when, when you're flying, everybody wants to know, how fast does this thing go? Like, what are you normally cruising at and what can it? Yeah, with a full load of 12 people and IFR fuel, we're probably cruising at about 130 to 135 knots. Mm -hmm. Um, nice. If we're empty a little bit faster. Yeah, yeah. And then when you're flying kind of between between the heliports, do you fly like just one set route, one set altitude, or do you have different routes, different altitudes? It's like very that? dependent. So the VFR side still fairly structured in the Vancouver area here yeah. with terminal. So we've got a, a selection of maybe nine or 10 different VFR routes. And we try and vary that to keep the noise down for the people who live below us, oh, okay. uh, particularly in the Gulf Islands and in Victoria, yeah, uh, as well as the Vancouver Peninsula. So kind of each flight takes a different route just so you Yeah, you we try and mix it up a little bit. And uh, IFR, we're a little more limited. We have mm -hmm. one high level IFR route that's our most direct. And then we have a couple of low level uh, IFR routes that are built for uh, staying out of the icing. And oh, those okay. take us a little bit longer. Our normal IFR route would take us about 33 to 34 minutes to Victoria, yeah. and the icing route uh, adds about 10 minutes to that. Oh, okay. So Phil, do you want to give us a, a bit of a, a tour of the cockpit? Maybe just kind of go through your flow as how you would start it? All right, so we've got a, a glass cockpit display here. Um, we've got switches on the overhead here, which give us our electrics, our heating systems, uh, radios. And then on the non-flying pilot side, we have our light switches, 
and a few other systems like air conditioning. If I turn the battery back on here. We've got the integrated instrument display system here, which is booting up, which will give us all our caution and warning panels, uh, pressures, temperatures, and performance display. And on both sides, we have uh, redundant flight instruments, electronic attitude indicator and electronic heading indicator. We've got RADALT, we've got uh, automation controls, a radar display, GPS, and then moving down the center console here, we have our standard radio package, including an FM radio and a universal FMS. SAT phone with ISAT emergency tracking. Some more automation controls and compass controllers. Moving up uh, circuit breaker panel in the center console and overhead. And then coming back to our engine quadrant, which has fuel levers, engine levers, and fire T handles for the fire suppression system. This one has digital engine controls, so it's a fully automated start. So it's a matter of putting the lever in the correct position and hitting the button, uh, yes. and it uh, controls the start for us. In the A models that we do operate, that's a fully modulated start where the pilot is responsible for the fuel control. So our maximum takeoff weight is 11,700 pounds and empty sitting here on the ramp with no fuel in it, uh, it's just under 8,000 pounds. Yeah, so the S76 uh, C double plus has uh, full flight director and automation features so we can fly uh, coupled up fully to the autopilot. The aircraft will fly an instrument approach, for example, to a runway and uh, has an auto level feature. So on our scheduled service, we operate with two pilots uh, and we operate uh, day and night VFR and IFR. Uh, we do charter work in the summers as well with these same machines. So if, uh, it's authorized to fly single pilot uh, day VFR. So Phil, if uh, someone's just come out of flight school and they want to sit exactly where you are right now, what do you recommend they do to get the necessary experience to become um, basically an airline helicopter pilot? So you can start with us as a co-pilot on the 76 with a commercial helicopter pilot's license uh, along with an instrument rating and a night rating. Once you're ready to move up to captain, you'd require the airline transport license. So again, to start on our scheduled service, uh, we have some of our co-pilots start right around the 150 to 160 hours. Generally, they would start on the ramp first and work their way up to a flying position. And then moving up to captain, as I mentioned, you need the airline transport rating, which is somewhere in between the 1500 to 2000 hour range where you'll obtain that. If you're on the ambulance operation, you require 1,000 hours to be a co-pilot and 3,000 to be a captain. If you are a low-time pilot coming out of flight school, I'd say you come down here and apply for a job on the ramp and uh, work hard and uh, be uh, persevere uh, because the jobs do come up here and it's a great place to start down the IFR path. Uh, one bit of advice I would give pilots coming out of flight school is to take whatever flying position you can find. So if a pilot were to go out and get a job out in the bush or fighting fires or doing crew changes and come to us with uh, anywhere from 500 to 1,000 hours of VFR experience, they certainly wouldn't have to work on the ramp necessarily. They would be at a position where we could move them straight into a flying job. So a rough salary range would be starting out as a low time pilot, probably in about the forty to $45,000 a year range. And then uh, senior captains would be somewhere around the $110,000 to $120,000 range, depending how long they've been here.
Phil, do you want to give us a, a bit of a walk around on the outside of this machine now? So we saw the cockpit already. In the passenger configuration here, we've got room in the back for 12 passengers. So the front row access is through the front door. And then through the middle door here, we've got two more rows of seats. So what's that, we've got 12 passengers? 12 passengers and two pilots. Then in the back here, we've got the baggage uh, compartment. <laughs> well, my baggage Accessible in Accessible from both sides, uh, as is the passenger cabin. And then back around, of course, to the tail, which is almost hanging over the water, so we don't need to get uh, too close to that. Got our two aerial engines. And that'll give you a little bit of a view into the intake with the barrier filter at the front of the engine. And then forward of that, we can just see the back end of the transmission. With the 76, it's a little hard to see the whole transmission unless the cowlings are off. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what you need to do to become a helicopter airline pilot. If you're going to be thinking of taking flight school soon, head over to pilotteacher.com and check out over a hundred different ways that you can save money on your flight training. So, I'll see you next time.